The pandemic led to a rare decline in the finances of European football clubs during the 2019-2020 season. The combined market across the continent lost $4.7 billion. The big five leagues saw revenues fall by 11% due to empty stadiums and the knock-on effects on the club's coffers. The research was carried out by Deloitte's Dan Jones. So the effect of matchday revenue is, is substantial. So t taking uh, you know, England as an example, for the Premier League over the course of a whole season, ordinarily, uh, matchday revenue could get to about a billion dollars. So you know, that's clearly a big loss um, to, have, to have foregone. Um, and then also, of course, there's been rebates to broadcasters as well. So, yeah, the, the big hit is coming from the, the match day revenue. It's, it's a relatively smaller part of the business, but, of course, it's fundamentally important because the businesses tend to spend pretty much all the money they get. And also, of course, having fans in Stadia is part of what the broadcasters are paying for as well. Yeah, the broadcasters and the clubs did a great job getting the games back on TV, but it's not the same watching it without a crowd. So getting crowds back in Stadia is really key to the... Yeah, the future health of the business. And as you say, their broadcast rights also a major income stream. And with a break on matches being played, how did that affect clubs? So there was uh, probably two or three things going on. One was rebates to broadcasters. So um, that, that varied by country, but in most countries, uh, there was a rebate to the broadcasters for the fact that the matches were delayed and were going to be screened without fans. Then secondly, in terms of where the revenue that was left fell, um, again, with matches being delayed, where the revenue fell in the club's accounts was also delayed, which has accentuated the dip for the 1920 uh, year. And then thirdly, that, that point around you know, the importance of getting fans back in stadia, because that enhances um, you know, what people are watching on TV. If you've got you know, endless content to choose from to watch on a screen, if you're, if you're turning to a football match and there's no one watching it in the stadium, it's not as compelling, doesn't draw you in in the same way as if there's 40 or 50,000 people clearly passionate about what they're watching, which makes you inclined to watch on your screen as well. And what have clubs done to try and offset these losses? What alternative ways have they found to keep revenue coming in? So it's tough. Um, it is tough to, to, to sort of fill those gaps for revenue. But what we've seen is a real acceleration of clubs engaging with their fans digitally. So it had always you know, been on the agenda. It's clearly very important for clubs because you know, they have fans beyond those who come to the stadium. But the pandemic has made it even more important to, to keep that connection going with fans digitally when they can't attend games, when they can't be in the stadium. And so the clubs have really, really pushed on on, the, on that front. Over the years, we've seen enormous wage inflation for players. There was some pushback against that in the early part of the pandemic. But has there been a longer term impact on those big sums we see being earned by players? So that's probably going to be the, the, the sort of fascinating thing to see over the next year or two in terms of the legacy from all this. So we saw a 13% um, reduction in revenues, um, but the wage bill across the big five leagues stayed pretty flat. Now, that led to you know big losses because obviously if revenues are falling and the wage bill is staying flat, that, that's not healthy financially. But the fact that wages were staying flat, that's really the first time we've ever seen that. If that continues over the next couple of years, as revenues rebound, if, the, if that same constraint, uh, restraint is shown on the, on the wage bill and on transfer fees, we could actually see clubs emerging sort of financially stronger and more profitable, more sustainable. So that's the key thing we're going to watch over the next couple of years.